Yeah, he'll get it. Go ahead. You guys ready to worship the Lord this morning? So go. To sing to the King who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Life and salvation his empire shall bring. And joy to the nations when Jesus is king. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise and sing now with voices raised to Jesus. And sing to the King. Okay, from the top, let's try that again. Ready? Lord, we worship you this morning. To sing to the King who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Life and salvation His empire shall bring. Glory to the nation when Jesus is king. Sing it out. Oh, come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. Yeah. Lift up a heart of praise. Sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King. For He's returning, we watch and we pray. We will be ready the dawn of that day. We'll join in singing with all the redeemed. Come on now. To Satan is vanquished and Jesus is king. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise and sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Come sing to the King. Come on, sing it. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise and sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Come sing to the King. Well, we will sing, we will sing, we will sing. Come sing to the King. Sing to the King. morning, gentlemen. How many know we're in a fight? Dan, you, is that true, Dan? Yes, we are. How many know you're called to be the army of God? No, no. Do you really? Oh, yeah, kind of. I kind of. I think I am. Bob, lead us in this song, man. It's an old song, man. We're going to bring it back. I want you to sing this song, okay? Lord, we stand before your throne to worship you and you alone. Proclaim your name throughout the land that all may know and understand. 
We are the army of the Lord. Yes, Lord. We're marching onward for our King. Say that again. Here we go. Come on, man. Put your hands together. Lord, we stand before your throne to worship you and you alone. Proclaim your name throughout the land that all may know and understand we are the army of the Lord. We're marching onward for our King. Stand and fight, stand and fight, take up your sword. To battle in the name of the Lord. We are armed with might to destroy the night. Then darkness is defeated by our praise. And darkness is defeated by our praise. And Lord, we stand before your throne to worship you and you alone. Proclaim your name throughout the land that all may know and understand we are the army. Yes, Lord. We're marching onward for our King. Stand and fight. We'll take up your sword. Do battle in the name of the Lord. We are armed with mine to destroy the night. Darkness is defeated by our praise. And darkness is defeated by our prayer. Let's sing that one more time. Come on, man. Lord, we stand before your throne to worship you and you alone. Proclaim your name throughout the land that all may know and understand. We are the army of the Lord. Yes, we are. We're marching onward for our King. Stand and fight. Take up your sword and do battle in the name of the Lord. We are armed with might, with might to destroy the night. The darkness is defeated by our prey. The darkness. The darkness is defeated. The darkness is defeated. The darkness is defeated by our praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody say amen. One more. I don't know if you ever heard this song, but we're going to try it. He is a man of God, I look into your face. As a man of God, I lift my hands and pray. He is a man of God, your name I will proclaim. Yes, Lord. Cause I'm a man of God overwhelmed by living grief. So let me be the one you'll send to the nation. Let me be the one to shake the gates of hell. For in these final days, Lord, your name I will proclaim. And here I am. Let me be the one. Here's a man of God, I have no condemnation. Yeah. He is a man of God, I'll stand for what is right. 
Yes, a man of God, my life belongs to Jesus. Cause I'm a man of God, overwhelmed, balls of grace. Let me be the one, let me be the one that you send to the nation. And let me be the one to shake the gates of hell. For in these final days, will your name I will proclaim. And here I am. Let me be the one, let me be the one, sing it again. Let me be the one you'll send to the nation. Let me be the one to shake the gates of hell. For in these final days, Lord, your name I will proclaim. Here I am, let me be the one these final days. Oh, in these final days, for oh, your name I will proclaim. And here I am, let me be the one. Here I am, Lord. And here I am, let me be the one. Here I am, let me be the one. Somebody say yes, Lord. We worship you, God. Lord, you are worthy of praise this morning, oh God, forever and ever and ever. Come on, man. Good morning, men of God. Thank you for being here. Wow. Gary, that was awesome. That was just awesome. Hey, good morning, man. <laughs> Do I need to move it up? I don't know. How about right there? Yep, there it is. You're the man. Oh, goodness gracious. I yeah. feel like I just worked out. Yeah. <laughs> well, you did. <laughs> that was a great. That was great. Hey, Pastor Mike, good morning. good morning. Hey, thanks for kicking up the dress code around here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's about time. Yeah. Yeah, you're looking good, Mike. <laughs> you're really looking good. Yeah. Well, hey, good morning. Good, good morning, morning. Gus. Good to see good, you. Good to see you. Uh, you may notice something a little different. Uh-huh. Well, besides, besides this. <laughs> he says he's, he's feeling good, no pain, except when he took pain meds. That's right. That's weird. That <laughs> That's not normal, Gus. That's not. Yeah, I know that's not normal. <laughs> that's not normal yeah, at all. Yeah, so I don't take them. So, but the, uh, the boom in the mic is switched. Yes, it is. And 24 yes, hours ago, yeah. it wasn't. No, it wasn't. And it didn't switch until... Yesterday morning. Yeah, about 10 o'clock. About 10 o'clock, yep. Yeah, about, yeah. about 10 o'clock. Okay. I was sitting at my desk, and I, had, <laughs> I, uh, I was coming in to prepare for today, and, and I grabbed my Bible, and uh, I did it in the, in the dark, and so I didn't have my Bible. I had my wife's Bible, and all my notes were in my Bible. And then I was sitting at my computer trying to figure out how to type, and I realized I couldn't type. I was trying to do it with one hand, and that wasn't working. And I thought, Father, how am I going to get this done? And then this man called. I thought, oh, it's going to be Scott tomorrow. <laughs> See what happens when you make phone calls? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. how it worked. The yeah. Holy Spirit did it right away. And then Be you, ready in season and, and out. Out of season. But you're right. always in season. Amen, <laughs> Amen. brother. Amen. You're always ready. Amen. Yeah. And then you went home, and the Lord just gave you that out of a loop. Yeah, I mean, it was a holy time. I, yeah, I, I seriously, I got home into my home office and I said, "All right, Lord, what's your message?" And I opened it up. I am not kidding. And you guys have all experienced this. I, I know. I opened it up to Luke twelve, and there, and yeah. it was there. Well, and, and and one of the things I want you guys, you guys all know that God is in law enforcement, but all the things He's gone through, when all those the, the our police and law enforcement got ambushed up there, He had to be, He was up there. He was at the, he'll tell you some things, and, you know, at the funeral, uh, of this man was only 38 years old. Yeah. He was there. He was in the investigation of the guy that was shooting here uh, that would, got taken down. You know, and I'm just thinking, you know, sometimes we just see him up here, but you don't realize this is harm's way. He's been in harm's way all, all month long. And, and then our law enforcement, and then they're talking about defunding our police. Are you kidding? You know, the I mean, it's all talk. Oh, it, it's sad, though. 
Yeah. Man of God, uh, you're 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 the one doing this today. So yeah. take us, and we've prayed over you. And yes, really, you may this be one of those mornings where our lives are refreshed. And Thank you, brother. God and you. you know who bought my coffee this morning? See, usually the way it works yeah. is if if you're if you're speaking, yeah. preaching, yeah. then you the, buy my coffee. Then I buy the coffee. I mean, that's the least I could do, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so. Yeah. But when you're speaking, yeah. <laughs> then I buy the coffee. Amen. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, so, good morning. Yeah, you, yeah. Uh, you know how it works. I see everybody full. Hey, Tim. Tim's back there. You got to move, son. I know. I know your name is on the back of that chair. I know it's your chair, but. <coughs> But hey, would somebody move to his table if, if you know, because, yeah, thank you, brother, because, I mean, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard to read scripture around the table when you're the table. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, let's, let's take 10 minutes or so, and uh, so, yeah, these scriptures, uh, he told me, he says, yeah, throw something together, and that's, that's, not how it works, but you guys know how it goes, so take your time and we'll get back together in about 10.
cryptic from hidden. Just, I mean, it's a whole semester right there, and right. Hey, man. Uh, let's get some Joe. And may you, you don't get to see this. You don't ordinarily. You don't get to see this because you're gone. Yeah. Hey, Rick, get some Joe. There's some donuts still. We got about two minutes. That would be 120 seconds. Yeah. All right. All right, kids. Have a seat. It's good to see everybody. What a gift this is to be able to It's Wednesday. Things seem a little normal. We're not evacuating the facility. Although I got to, that was kind of entertaining. Who was that last week? We did that. Two weeks. What was last week? Oh, I was going. <laughs> thank yes, thank you, Warren. Yeah, I wasn't here uh, last week. Uh, I'll show you a couple pictures of what I was doing last Wednesday. Uh, but I never saw. So, you know, Gary is, you know, he's a great man of God. We, we We've known Gary for, for, for a long time. But I've never, when I said, hey, dude, we've got to evacuate, i never seen a man j run out of here quicker. He, the dude, I'm pretty sure he peeled out right here at the corner as he's going north. I told I said, where'd Gary go? And he's gone. So that's a man who listens to instruction as well. Yeah, it was good. Yes. <laughs> uh, let, let's, let's open up in prayer, you guys, because that's, that's what we've got to do. Father God, uh, what a joy it is to be together as your sons, sons that you have ordained, that you've created before the foundations of this earth to be here on this day, to hallow your name, to tell you how much we love you, and just to surrender and give you everything that belongs to us, Father. Before it belonged to us, it belonged to you. You gifted it to us, and now, Father, we give everything back to you. Would you have your way this morning? Would you speak through your servant, your warrior that you created perfectly for just a time as this? Bless our time together, Father. Speak through me as we just discover more majesty um, of your word and of, of your gifting to us, Lord. So be with us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, I pray. Amen. Yeah, it's funny. 
um, when uh, a man like Gus Bess says, hey, I need you to do something, um, there, there's, no, there's no wiggle room. You guys ever notice that? You've noticed that, Pastor Mike. There's no wiggle room with this man. If he says, hey, look it, I'm sitting here and I'm frustrated. How do you type with one hand? Well, you don't, first of all. Well, I suppose you, I mean, that would take you a long time to do anything. So I was just calling to see how he was doing and, and just seeing what kind of what the order of operations were for today. And, and, and I had no idea. But, you know, 1 Peter 3.15 always pops into my mind, right? Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. So we're always ready. We have to always be ready, especially as, uh, as the end begins to ramp up. We don't know when that's going to be. It's fun to talk about. We love talking about, you know, the Lord's coming, right? And we're going to witness. We are going to witness it. Let's be clear. Whether or not we're in the flesh or we're in spirit, uh, I can guarantee you guys are going to have a front row seat. And it's going to be spectacular. Uh, there's, there's not going to be any doubt about that. Yeah, you, <laughs> you will be impressed. Even Bob King will be impressed. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so I tell you what. You know, when, when you're running ragged, your tongue's hanging on the ground, uh, just to be able to take a deep breath once in a while and just, just realize again that the Lord is in control, it, it, it doesn't matter. You guys already realize those questions I ask. They're completely rhetorical. You know, it doesn't take, it doesn't take much of a, a maturity in Christ to go um, to answer those questions in the affirmative. But there's a little twist in there that, that uh, I want to tell you about here. Um, a little bit later on. So it's been quite a year so far, hasn't it? There's, did you ever think that 2020... We're only in June. You realize that. July's not even here. <laughs> you know, we started off the beginning of the year in Australia, right? There's those huge brush fires down there. Uh, they estimated that 500 million animals would, were destroyed in that fire. That, 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 was, that kicked off the year. And then right then we killed the, that Iranian general. You guys remember his, his name? Soleimani. And a few other terrorists. And then at that guy's funeral, 56 people were killed by a crush, right, that injured more than 200. And in that whole moray, um, they ended up shooting down that U Ukrainian airliner, right, that was taken off when they lob missiles back into Iraq where we were. 176 people on board there. They're all, they were all killed. Um, and then Trump was impeached. That was in January as well, right? And the trial began in the Senate. Um, and then, last part of January, uh, this whole COVID-19 thing, pandemic was, you know, broke out and was declared a pandemic. And then you know what happened after that. Um, and that's just in January. I know, dude. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> and so, bless you, by the way. So that's just in January, and then the economy crashed. I mean, right? And uh, you were just telling me this morning about Cayman Cyclery. They, they sold out of all their bikes, and they were able to reorder out of the, you know, the, the existing inventory, and they sold out of all of those. And then they tried to order again, and the warehouse is all, dude, the, the, the inventory's gone. They're not manufacturing now, so now uh, the inventory is hard to come by. That's a byproduct, obviously, of... Uh, of the economy crashing. So then we've got this pandemic. We can't, we can't assemble together. We can't hold church. We can't work. We can't, we got to stay in our homes. You got to, you got to do all this stuff because this virus is going to, it's going to get you and it's going to do damage. It could kill you. And there's a whole, you know, science behind that, that we're not going to talk about this morning, even though it's fun to talk about. Um, but it seems that it, is, uh, it was more fantastic than it really was, right? But it gripped the entire globe, you guys. So isn't that odd? How does something that uh, doesn't appear to be as deadly as we thought it was going to be grip the entire world? It's got to be of God. It's got to be ordained. It has to be orchestrated. We were just talking uh, um, here before I got up here that, that the Lord has to be sovereign. If he's not, if there is, do you realize if there's a single molecule in this entire universe that is doing something other than 
what it was designed to do, then the Lord can't be sovereign. God can't be sovereign. That means that every single molecule is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And all of this has to be ordained by God. For what purpose? We don't know yet completely. We're going to find out, I'm thinking. Right? But that is just, that's just January. Um, and then... The pandemic shifted when that unfortunate uh, event happened in Minneapolis and George Floyd was killed. Um, I've been a cop for 26 years now. Um, and uh, I know a lot of cops. What I can tell you in front of every, and I've never been ashamed of this, um, this term systemic racism, um, it doesn't exist. It doesn't. Systemic means that it's, that it's, uh, that word means that it's infiltrated, right? That it's spreading, that it's, um, I know thousands of cops. I don't know any bad ones. I, maybe that's just the higher patrol. Maybe that's just the circle that I'm involved with. But they do really good work. And stuff happens. I, I acknowledge that. Um, but um, it's, again, it's interesting how one incident can be shown over and over and over and over again. And it erupts in this massive protest. Um, it once again illustrates to me that it is not by accident. It can't be by accident. I thought about Isaiah 520. Should be one of your contemporary Memory verses that you speak of all the time. When you see crap going on, think of Isaiah 5.20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Woe to those who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. In other words, the world's upside down. And doesn't it certainly seem right now that the world is upside down? Um... It's obviously been a tad of a whirlwind for me personally, for my family, and obviously for Pastor Robles. Um, we, uh, my unit, my investigative body, we average a call out uh, once every six to eight weeks or so, you know, maybe a half a dozen a year, and, you know, that's manageable. Um, every time the phone rings, it, and it always happens. Why is this? I lay my head down, and whew, oh man, this feels good, right? And you kind of snuggle in, and it all, the phone always rings like within a half hour. It's like, all right, <laughs> just the way it goes, right? Because the call-outs tend to happen at night. Well, so if we average um, one every six to eight weeks, we had five in a three-week period uh, that just ended or culminated in, in, here in Paso Robles, Nice thing about it being here in Paso Robles is I didn't have to travel very far because uh, our division covers everything from L.A. County all the way up to San Jose. And uh, that's, that's a, lot of, it's a lot of miles, a lot of territory, and we were going all over the place. But we had a quad fatal in San Jose, high speed, killed four people out of the six that were in the car, alcohol-related. Um, we had a CHP motor out of uh, Salinas go down on us Harley because uh, Harleys aren't meant to drive 100 miles an hour. And uh, they, the particular ones that we have have developed this, this what, what they call affectionately, oddly enough, that a death wobble. Um, and there's a shimmy that, that develops, and it can exacerbate and cause the guy to go down. And he's a stud rider, very experienced, but um, he's doing about 100, mile, 100 miles an hour chasing the speed, and, and he goes down. That was one. Um, and then we got a call... Um, uh, there was a gentleman who killed uh, that federal officer up in Oakland. And uh, he uh, kept going and eventually hunkered down in um, uh, a little community. I never knew this community existed. It was called Ben Loman up on Highway 9. Last time I was up on Highway 9, I was going up to Mans Camp up there at Mount Hermon. And so we went up there because he ambushed a bunch of law enforcement, uh, killed one of the Santa Cruz uh, Sergeant Santa Cruz SO sergeants wounded another one and uh, and a CHP officer. So we went up to investigate that 
And uh, I'm going to, I'll talk about that here in a little bit. But, um, and then Paso blew up, right? Um, Paso was interesting. Who would ever thought that uh, uh, something like that could happen in this town? But yet it did, which means, is there any doubt that um, if we talk a lot about demons, uh, you guys, they're real. You know, all you, I mean, if the word of God is truth from start to finish, there's plenty of conversation in there uh, teaching about demons. So we know that they exist. And uh, to think that that that, that um, uh, exploded in this community and gripped us, didn't it? It gripped this town, this little town of 35,000 people uh, for two solid days. People barricaded in their homes with, you know, when your pastor is saying, dude, I'm loaded up, ready to go, you know that, yeah, things are, things are real. Uh, but anyway, um, it was funny. I just learned, I just learned this yesterday that uh, Mason Lira, uh, a troubled young man, truly, truly troubled, um, he found a little, you know, the, the movie theater downtown, right? He found a little grate um, that, that gave him access underneath that movie theater that never got locked up after they had done some work. And that's where he was hiding out. That's where he was living. And, um, I, and there, were, there were six shell casings right in that little area that we were working on. And that dude, when we couldn't find him, that day, that on Wednesday, when we couldn't find him, he was right there. He was probably from here to that to the piano away from me as we were working there, and we had no idea. He had no idea. Um, but the Lord protects, right? He's all that guy, you know. He's he's down. Uh, he's gonna. He's, he was probably sleeping. I, no, he looks. At, I don't know what he's doing, but I know that he didn't uh, choose to engage us. And um, so again, the Lord is sovereign. Right? He orchestrates everything. Um, I want you to turn to Luke 12 for me. I told you that when Gus asked me to, uh, to kind of give you a, a little debrief, if you will, of today, um, I went home I, about 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon is when I finally sat down in my office, opened it up, and here's Luke 12. And I just wanted to uh, read a couple things or, or highlight a couple uh, uh, phrases that, that the Lord spoke to us. And um, because it's as uh, relevant today as it was then. You know, he was speaking to a crowd. There, there were thousands there, just like these protests. There were thousands there, and they began trampling one another. Uh, we, we've seen that in this country. But Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, saying... Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. You guys have all heard about yeast, the, you know, the leaven that goes into the dough that, 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 that does its work. Uh, we always think about it in the context that, you know, once that, once that leaven, once that yeast goes into the dough, it is forever changed. But the interesting thing about the Greek, that word yeast Izume, and I love this definition that I got out of Bible Hub. It says the spreading influence of what is typically concealed. You can't see the yeast work, but you see the results of the yeast working in the dough, right? That's what Jesus is saying here. Be on your guard against the spreading influence that is typically concealed. And then when he speaks of the Pharisees, he's always talking about the hypocrisy, right? The pharisaical behavior of men that just, they want to be the show, right? They want to be uh, the center of attention. Be on your guard against those men. There is nothing concealed that will be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known, the Lord says. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight in which you have whispered in the ear of the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs. In other words, God is sovereign. There is nothing that is hidden from His sight, nothing that can be concealed. Verse 4, I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more, but I will show you whom you should fear. 
Fear him who, after killing the body, has the power to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. In two sentences, two verses, he uses the word fear four times. I'm telling you, when the Lord wants to get his point across, what does he do? When you're telling your kids or your grandkids something that you want to get the point, you you say it most. <clears throat> Excuse me, you say it multiple times, right? That's what, so when the Lord says, do not be afraid, let me tell you who you should fear. Okay, you fear the Lord. And that, that, that word there for fear, there's, there's a reverence quality to it. We don't fear our Father, our Creator. We love Him, right? But there is a reverence there. If He tells us to do something, we do it. It's an automatic thing. That's part of obedience, so when the Lord tells me, hey, you got to go work another scene, I'm all, all right, let's go. You know, somebody's got to do it. Sergeant Gutzweller was the deputy that was killed up in Santa Cruz on June 6th. Um, and uh, I've done a lot of law enforcement funerals. The Lord's given, I don't know how it's happened, but um, the third, so the funeral was Wednesday. The Thursday before, um, I got a phone call saying, hey, uh, the funeral's Wednesday, and um, they want to do a gun salute. They want to uh, do all five facets of the honor guard, and they're asking you to, to coordinate it. This is Thursday. I got nobody. And, of course, my first response is, you got to be kidding me. We don't do, we can't do a, you know what it takes to do a firing party, the rehearsal, it's got to be perfect. You got seven guys standing there when the command to fire is given. It can't be pop, 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 pop. It's got to be one sound. So it takes work. So I said, I can't do that. We don't. We haven't practiced. I don't even have a. I don't ha even have a squad together. And so I declined. I said, we can't do it. And then I get a phone call from a colleague of mine, and he talked me into it. And about it took him about 20 seconds. So we did it. I said, he goes, he goes I, already, I already got rifles. He got seven M1 Grands, uh, Garands from the VFW out of Santa Maria. I got them. And he goes, well, and then I said, because, you know, you throw out excuses why you can't. Well, we need ammo. He goes, I got 176 rounds. <laughs> Doggone it. <laughs> well, we need time. We need time. And he goes, uh, Look at your email. I look at my email, and there's an email string from my, my chief. A two, he's the commander of the entire division. He goes, whatever they need is approved. Oh, man. So that means all the command, because I'm going to pull guys in, military guys, right, who have, who have had that, that kind of training. And it came together. By Monday, we were shooting M1 Grands. It was It was beautiful. And someday, I hope you get to see the video. Karen's working on it. She came up there with me, and she's got this sweet camera that she went up on the, on the hillside and videoed it all. Um, but so we did the casket guard. You got that first photo, bud? Put that first photo up. Um, this is the casket guard. And I got to tell you, if you've ever, if you have the opportunity to go to a state funeral, um, just go. Uh, this was held at the Cabrillo College um, outdoors in a football stadium. The entire football stadium had chairs and then uh, bleachers. There's, I don't know, five, 6,000 people there, mostly law enforcement. I saw guys from, um, I saw Rochester PD, uh, New York PD was there. Um, they come from all over the country. And um, so this is from the Associated Press, uh, a picture that was pulled down and sent to me. Um, that's your buddy standing right in the middle commanding the guard relief. We did it eight times during the service. And so um, when uh, law enforcement goes down in the line of duty, we guard him until he goes in the ground. He's never left by himself. So when, when it's 2 o'clock in the morning and, and he's in the mortuary, um, he's being guarded. And so when they pull him out, and he's like this, we guard him until we put him in the ground. It's beautiful. We did that eight times. Uh, next one there, bud. Fooey, I'm going to run out of time. We always run out of time. Um, 
So, yeah, this is the first time I brought the men back. I'm sorry, I brought them out, and I turned on to the 50-yard line. I saw his casket sitting there for the first time. You can't help, but it just it, it grabs you, just the visual of it. Um, and then the next one. Um, this is the firing party. So after the service, we go to uh, the gravesite. The gravesite, they wanted a, a, a private burial. So there's maybe, I don't know, 60, 70 people there. Um, you know, family and then some of the law enforcement and everything else. And then, but that is where the full military honors are bestowed upon the man who did not swerve from the path of duty and lay down his life. Because there is no love greater than a man who will lay down his life for his friend. A friend that he didn't even know, a community that he had served for just a few years. He was only 38 years old, has a little boy named Carter, two years old. His wife, uh, Fabi, is pregnant. She's going to give birth here probably this week. It's brutal. Gavin Newsom was there. So the, the honor guard tent was on, in one of the end zones, and right next to it was the family, guard, or the family tent. And so when the governor came in, you know, we've been praying for him, praying for his very soul, that, he would, that, that the Lord would just, just touch him, and the man would be saved. He shows up. He's got his security. It's all high patrolmen. Uh, but his security shows up, um, you know, first. Cause, so you, there, you can always tell, right, when the dignitary is coming in because you always you see the security first. San Jose PD came down there. They had security over the whole place. It was beautiful. Anyway, he shows up. He's got his mask on. He goes into the tent. He's in there for five minutes. He comes out. The mask is off, and he's been bawling because he's got a couple of kids, and he realized the gravity of what had occurred, and he couldn't stay. He left. So that's good. That's what we need him to feel, the good pleasure of our Lord. So, but this is the fire party. This is out at, uh, out at the cemetery. Uh, these guys polished all 21 of their rounds that they shot. Uh, we give a little bag to, to, to the widow. What we're going to do here is I'm going to print this. Karen's going to work on it a little bit. We're going to print it on canvas, and we are going to put John 15, 13, the verse that you read, right up at the top, and then these men are going to sign it. There's a Marine in there. There's a couple of Army soldiers in there, um, and just but they're all stud men. They sounded great. They looked great. Uh, Taps was awesome. Um, the entire Honor Guard component, the, the protective services, everything was handled by the higher patrol because that's, that's what we do. Um, man, you, you had me. I got, I got a bunch of more stuff, dude. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, we're not going to get to it. Uh, but phooey, that's the way it, can, that's the way it goes. I'm going to leave you with this. Um, the questions that I gave you, they're obviously rhetorical, right? Um, do you believe, however, that he's sovereign? Seriously, check this out. Are you doubting at all his sovereignty in any component of your life? If your anxiety flips around a bit, and it should, I mean, look at what we've been through uh, uh, in just these first six months of 2020. If fear has gripped you more than it ever has, if you're short-tempered more, do you find that? Are you drinking more? Are you studying God's word less? These are all signs that that, that anxiety, that fear is creeping into, into your, uh, your, your flanks, your six o'clock, your blind sides. Um, if that is at all occurring with you, I'm here to tell you that you are currently in the right place. Because the remedy for that is to gather as men, to study together as men, to proclaim that there is no one like the Lord together as men, and then look at those questions backwards. Okay? If you have any doubt at all that the Lord is sovereign in your life, the first thing you must do is surrender your fear to Him. Amen. Psalm 37 was perfect for that. And I wanted to go back and read that some more, but we're not going to have time. But look at Psalm 37 again. Take care of your fear. There's nothing you have to be afraid of. The Lord wins. There's a song that I love. It's, uh, it's, it's called Sea of Victory by Elevation Worship. You guys have probably heard it if you're listening to Christian music, K-Love or The Message or whatnot. Here's the second verse, just the, the, a part of it. 
And then, Gary, you can come back up as I'm doing this here, huh? There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. Not that he has win, that he's going to win. I'm not backing down from any giant because I know how this story ends. I'm going to see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. So surrender your fear, you guys. If there's anything at all, surrender your, your fear to Him. He then will become sovereign in your thoughts as you study more, as you pray more, and then your life ultimately is His, and we're good to go. Love you guys. I'm sorry this was... This is always... Yeah.